Welcome back to the channel. Let's get this woods beater back in woods beater shape. Here we go. Now this is a vehicle of many problems, but we got a prioritizer out here and get things ready for the woods. First priority, we got a little fuel leak we got to deal with. Uh, also, I'm sure we can find some improvements to make. There's a lot of room for improvement. Another woods problem we've been having on this thing is uh, we splash into a mud hole and she just gulps down tons of water and dies out obviously get some ass airflow dirty uh it'd be nice to get some kind of splash guard i don't know i've been figuring over here something simple easy cheap and i can replicate on other vehicles we'll see what we come up with now from what i can tell is our fuel leak is from the tank it uh, leaks when it's not running it's a very slow leak and uh, it doesn't seem to matter if it has pressure or not so i'm calling it a tank looks like that's where it was coming from but what I'm not going to do is buy a new fuel tank for this crusty old Explorer. We're going to have to figure something out on this, uh, on this level, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I live my life five gallons at a time, guys. Here we go, let's get busy. So the order we're going to do this is we're going to cut a hole in the floor here, where the fuel tank is. We're going to run those hoses out into probably a five-gallon can. Real quick, dirty, simple, cheap, easy way to make a fuel tank. Probably won't even pull the old one out yet. Besides, I got other vehicles to get ready for showtime. Now, this isn't my first time poking a hole in the floorboard to get a fuel pump stuff. So here's my technique on how I find it. Now, typically, whatever vehicle I'm working on is covered in mud. So what I like to do is go up here and just find those lines as they, where they go into the tank. Then, I come up here and I draw on the mud right about the parallel where it's at so, so this way you can see the marks i made open the door follow that mark right on across to here that's how i come up with that measurement and then the same thing on the back i don't know if you all can see the way i can but see the fuel tank there in the middle the sending units right down the middle we come up here make a line in the dust That's how we end up with this. My other explorers, I was able to take this thing and just whack a hole, a square, the size that I needed to get in there to work because they were so rusty. This one, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. It's, it's uh, the least rustiest explorer I have. Yeah, I'm going to try it anyway. So let's uh, carve us out a square here. If we can't get a little crazy with the hatch, huh? Yep. Okay, a little progress report. We need to come further this way, but we are making a good hole. We're not using a whizzy wheel, causing a bunch of sparks. You know, don't use that. You don't want to cause sparks when you're looking for a fuel tank that leaks. Ooh, somebody went to Harbor Freight. <laughs> Now at this point you can probably use a sawzall. Just be very aware of where these lines are. And don't hit them. That would suck, right? Okay, well the reality is this is all the more I need to go. I was figuring on pulling the whole sending unit out, but I got to thinking I got a whole nother fuel pump on the shelf back here. Uh, Rock Auto was running a sale, and they had a couple of these cheap fuel pumps for explorers left, and I bought the rest of them. Uh, so you can't have them anymore. <laughs> but I did find out something I was dreading to find out. This is a return style. Bleh. I don't like that kind. That's all right. We can make it work. By the way, my 2000 Explorer, not a return style. I don't know. Now, typically on a return style fuel system, you have one that's slightly bigger than the other. I think this is our bigger one. This is our other one. So this should be the feed. This should be the return. I guess. We'll see. I think what I'm going to actually do is cut these things right here. Maybe fatigue them a little bit and then use a proper cutting tool. Maybe even put a little flare on them. And then just plug the line straight into there. Right into our tank. We'll be ready to go. Be no problem. All right, got those cut. Totally didn't use a Sawzall. That would have been dangerous. 
But I definitely confirmed that uh, the fat one is a uh, feed and the other one's a return. We had pressure on the fat one, so no pressure on the uh, return. So that made sense. Going to clean these up a little bit. Maybe put a flare on them. We'll see. Plug some rubber lines in. Here we go. I bet those are going to be kind of hard to put a flare on. I'm going to go ahead and try it. Just double clamp it. And hopefully it'll stay sealed up. Let's find out. So we got the fuel line hooked up. We got two hose clamps facing opposite ways. Tighten them up with my impact. Ugga dugga. And uh, because I do things proper, you know? Okay. Okay, there's the basic idea. Now we want our fuel pump to be at the bottom of our tank, so we want to try to find a place to make our cut in the line. It's gonna be down here. Okay, it's the next day and it's raining. I don't know if you can hear. We're gonna press on with work on the old Explorer here, maybe even some other vehicles. Um, I might try to do a voiceover since this rain is so awful. We'll see how it comes out in post, but hey, it's drying here. Let's get to work. Okay, going back to the hat mount. We're gonna try that again. Might as well since it's gonna be a rainy day. Not sure what I robbed out of this packet already, but uh, still got the fuel pump in here. Great. We have uh, some kind of strainer, sock there, and a connector. Great. See our sock here. Keys into that. Okay, still don't know what that's for. Okay, so time to start building this ship in the bottle here. Okay, we've got a nice tight fit. Here comes the fun part. Now we gotta fish this thing out so we can hook our fuel pump in. Here we go. All right, so here's my little trick for this particular problem of feeding this back through. Take a generous size open or closed in wrench, and you can just hopefully you can see what I'm seeing. Feed that through a bit more than you really need to, and pull it back through. Electrical wires for the fuel pump. We're gonna use the same technique. Okay, we've got her poke through. Take the old wrench. Right around, ooh, 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 be real clumsy with it. Push them wires through. Okay. Oh, we wanna get some more in there. Oh, almost lost some blue. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, get them nice and tight. Ugga dugga. Ugga dugga. Pretty darn tight. It's got to hold the pump up during all the jostling we're going to do. It looks pretty good to me. We can clip. Oh dear, can you see that? Clip this guy into here. This monstrosity. And then we should be able to just slide that all back in the tank. I don't know if you can see in there. We'll try to do one of those. Pull this out a little bit just so it's standing up. And look at that. Right on the bottom of the tank. Weighted. Bang, bang, boom. All we got to do is run our positive and negative to the end of our wires. This is already piped into the fuel line to the engine. And then we're going to have to do a return line, which that'll be simple. Just another hole in this side with a rubber connector to this one. Boop, boop. Real simple. All right, from here we have the top of our sending unit here. And I'm pretty sure these two wires here on the right, the red and the black, are the positive and negative for the fuel pump. And these two are for the fuel gauge. Let's pop those off there. So I bet it's these two, though. All right, here's a look at the tank. I'm going to hook up the battery and twist the key and see if we make noise in there. That was the noise we were looking for. All right. One thing I did do on the return line is I put a hose clamp on the inside. That way it can't pull itself all the way out. But it doesn't need to be down in the tank. It 
can just be pulled up like that. Give a little extra line just in case we need to do a move the tank or patch or repair. We got a mess here, but put gas in this thing and this old girl will fire up. Boom, fixed. Everything's secure, huh? Kinda, mostly. It works. Uh, we got our return line in. We even got a cap on this guy and a strap. It's not going anywhere, All right, guys? Let's switch the key up and see if she fires up. All right, do a little prime. Oh, I can hear it gurgling. Let's see if we hook everything up right. Oh, yeah. It appears we have. I think we're good to go in the fuel system. Let's move on to the next. Here's the next place to start. You can see a fellow was polishing the fender with his tummy there, trying to figure out a solution for this air problem. The problem we're having is every time we hit a mud hole, we just fill the whole thing full of mud and she chokes out, mass airflow sensor gets dirty and it don't run so good. Now what I'm not going to do is spend money on this fix. Let's try to find a cheap, easy, simple solution. I got a whole roll of duct tape. We can do this. Uh huh? Fitment. Make it fit. A bigger inlet for performance. All right. Here's the finished product. I don't know. We'll figure something out. My theory on this is this is the least dirtiest spot under the hood. So I figured we could draw air from there, right? <laughs> that should work. I could probably still do a little bit of covering that with more pieces of garbage. And it's going to be good enough. We'll see how it works on the trail. Well, the good news is it's all things from the garbage and a roll of duct tape I forgot I had. So uh, really, I can't lose. So I can just take all this stuff off and throw it away if this doesn't work. But yeah, I got two of them in there. Yeah. Two antifreeze containers. <laughs> it still looks like it might suck some water down from this way. But nothing's sealed up down there. So even if I put some more tape on it and tape it off right here, I think it's going to be okay. We'll see. We even got a license plate in there. Now it's a rat rod. This is getting silly. Enough of that. Let's even start it, see if it even runs. We got enough open air space down there that it should run just fine. I'm kind of expecting it to breathe a little bit. We'll let you guys take a look. Sounds pretty good to me. We'll call it high performance. Probably should solve all that little bit off there. Better. Battery's a little low. We got it on the charger. Wireless charger and let's look at another problem we got. So, I've pulled a lot of rotten bits off this thing, tugging out the mercury and other explorers and what have you. And at this point, I just got this droopy chain lazily slung across there to hook things to. Uh, see if I can do a little better than that. It's not going to be great, but I can do better. Okay, it's not pretty. The frame's starting to twist there from the lack of cross member, but uh, it's good enough to go. If we have to hook to the rear, we're going to have to hook around the shackle. Eesh. It's starting to twist pretty bad. But, uh, you know, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Let's go. In the front, it looks like I'll rip this bumper the rest of the way off. That should be entertaining. And then they always leave these nice nubs here. You can wrap around those pretty good. And those are pretty good tow points after the bumper's gone. All right, I'm going to get the tires all at the same pressure, around 15 pounds. But this thing's out of here, ready for the trail, the woods.